Welcome to Fly Tying with Whiting, where each month we'll bring you a fly pattern tied by one of our experts using Whiting fly tying feathers. Whiting has a diverse line of feathers that serve many, many purposes in fly tying. And our intent here is to help you understand some of the many uses for, for whiting fly tying feathers. Whiting genetic fly tying feathers can help you tie better flies and be more successful out fly fishing. For this month's pattern, we're going to tie a blonde macaw loop wing. This is a classic dry fly pattern that I was inspired to tie by my fly tying mentor, Andre Poyans. A pattern very similar to this graced his logo in his fly shop for many years. The fly is a very delicate pattern and it, it leans more toward the artsy side of fly tying. So I hope you'll enjoy learning to tie this magnificent pattern. For the materials on this fly, we'll start with a Daiichi 1180 size 14 hook, Viva 16 aught black thread. We're gonna use a Whiting 4Bs rooster saddle in ginger for the tail. For the body, we'll use macaw tail fibers, which are a blend of blue and yellow. The wing is barred teal flank feathers. The hackle is a whiting cape in ginger. So let's start with our Daiichi 1180 size 14 hooks and our Vivas size 16 aught black thread. I'm going to tie my thread on at the two-thirds point of the hook, which is where I'm going to ultimately tie in the wing. For the wing, I'm going to use a barred teal flank feather, and I'll cut about six to eight of the longest fibers I can find on the feather, and that's going to form our wing. I'm going to tie these fibers on at the wing set position and I'm going to try and keep them as flat as I can to the hook. Ultimately these are going to be wound upright and I need them to form that pretty loop wing. I've taken my bodkin and I've pulled the feathers around the bodkin to form that loop and I'll proportion that to the hook and I'll tie this material on. I can use my bodkin to check proportions. And once I'm satisfied, I'll clip off the uh, butt section and I'm gonna go ahead and lift that wing up with my bodkin and tie several wraps in front of the wing to set it upright in the hook. You'll note I use my bodkin in handling the wings. The oils on my fingers will mat the barbs on the wing down and it won't handle the way it should. I'll reach in with my bodkin and split the wing and then I'm going to immediately perform a figure eight uh, wrapping a wrap or two of thread in between each wing to to separate those wings and then I'll move to post the wings first the near one with several wraps around the base of the wing itself and then the far wing with a couple of posts. These post wraps are very soft wraps so that I don't pull the thread off the wing.
So let me spin my vise around so you can see the wing from all sides. For the tail, I'm going to use a Whiting 4B's rooster saddle, and I'm going to choose a spade hackle up near the base of this saddle, where the barbs are much stiffer and much better for tailing material. So I've stripped off a section of barbs off the spade hackle, and I'll tie those in right at the back of the wing, and extending about two and a half times the gape, beyond the uh, hook shank. You can see that gives me a nice tapered body using that, that section behind where the wing laid. Next, I'm going to select three or four barbules off the blue tail feather of a macaw parrot. You'll note the macaw feather is yellow on its underside and blue on its top side. And this gives it a very unique coloration when I tie this into the fly. I'm going to tie the yellow fibers facing upward and the blue fibers facing down. So the first wrap I take with this feather will cause it to fold and I'll get the more dominant blue color to show up in the abdomen of this fly. I'll wind the material from the tail set up to the wing set position and then I'll go ahead and uh, tie this off and trim off the excess. For the hackle, I'm going to use whiting dry fly capes in ginger, and I'm going to select out two hackles for this fly. I've prepared two hackle feathers by stripping off some of the barbs at the base of the feather, and I'll tie that on right at the forward point of the body of the fly and just behind the wing. And then I'll wind forward in front of the wing to capture the last little bit of stem. I'm going to wrap these two hackle feathers on as one. I'll take two wraps behind the wing and a couple wraps in front of the wing. And if I don't like exactly how it's laying, I'll pull it back off and we can start over again. And we'll cross over in front of the wing. And take a couple wraps before we tie off. You'll note I'm always tying at 90 degrees to the hook shank to try and avoid any of these uh, fibers getting crossed up amongst one another. We'll take a few wraps and then clip off the excess of the hackle fibers and if I've got any strays I can clip those out as well. Just clean this up a little bit. and then I can drop into a whip finish not to finish the fly. So 
let me rotate this pattern around in the vise so you can see all sides of this artsy blonde loopwing Macaw Adams. I really enjoy tying this pattern. So that has been this month's Fly Tying with Whiting. I hope you've enjoyed this program, and please join us again for a future episode. Thanks for watching.